Checkmate issue one. Brian Michael Bendis with Alex Maleev on the art. So, and this does feel like just that, like, it feels like no time has passed. This feels like it just falls on from where we were at the end of the last Leviathan mini. And that that's my main criticism of it is that, so I read this before I read uh, Infinite Frontier. And they just feel like two separate universes. This feels like we have taken a, a trip back in the time machine. Um, even though, did this address stuff that was brought up in Justice League? I feel like it did. I don't know. Uh, I read too many comic books. This week. Re- Green Arrow referenced the current, like, he referenced the current team. He yeah. referenced he's in, he's in the team. So it did kind of tie okay. into what's going on, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. So um, that said, uh, right on its own, taking that out, uh, this is. The type of Benda stuff I enjoy. Um, I, I didn't. So. I didn't have a problem with. I mean, obviously, this feels like it was supposed to come out much sooner. To, you know, to, yeah. to the other series, but ultimately, I'm not really going to critique the writing that much uh, for that feeling because I mean, if that's the way it was written, then got pushed for whatever reason. Maybe it got pushed because the revelations that it's going to get to actually fit better with where we're going, you know, timeline wise or continuity wise right. uh, over the next right. several months, but. Uh, so we get some teases of the first time Talia met Mark Shaw, who, just to remind everyone, mm-hmm. is Manhunter, who turned out to be the leader of Leviathan. You may have it, forgotten that, because it's been a while. <laughs> yeah, and, and he stole Leviathan from her, which I yes. forgot. Like, I, not forgot, but I spaced. So, sure, yeah, yes. yeah. Uh, so basically, Damien is investigating a leviathan uh, ship <laughs> or a plane and talia sort of shows up at the same time they're both investigating and kind of banter a little bit but they end up getting caught because uh, they end up stowing away in the ship when they're trying to hide and mm-hmm. it leads to them being uh, held captive meanwhile the team of checkmate which is now formed which is our detectives uh with the mysterious character of mr king uh, being the leader mm-hmm. who none of them you know most of them don't really trust him yet they're kind of questioning them a lot and yeah if you don't remember yeah we got you know manhunter b- being you know the the what do we call her spencer yeah kate spencer, um, kate spencer. yeah kate spencer. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah green arrow you got question renee montoya uh bones steve trevor and lois right that is our, our checkmate team um yeah um and i do like so i know rucka and bennis are really close uh, i'm judging by connor silence he didn't read this of course he didn't yeah yeah, yeah. Why the damn so, hell would I have voluntarily read a Bendis book? Because uh, because of Maleev, um, and how how beautiful the art looks. But anyway, um, so we know Rucka and Bendis are really close, and I feel this is Bendis reinventing Checkmate, like Rucka's Checkmate, because there's a lot of references. As you know, I read I reread Checkmate last year, um, so there's a lot of references to how Checkmate used to run. Versus how this one's gonna run, which I appreciate. You yeah. know, I, I the the fact that Bendis goes out of his way through the characters to explain, you know, like when you look at that lineup, each of them is, is a different chess piece, right? Um, and I'm gonna try to pull it up here. Um, I, I mean, I'm looking at it right now. I'll just tell you if you want. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. So, but like, you have you have two bishops, right? Um, you have a pawn. You have a king and a queen, which I know that was king and, and Lois. Uh, you have a rook, which I think was Trevor. You know, so when you just think of those uh, titles on uh, the, in the Rucka version, and trying to figure how that fits here, I, I just I like that. I like that reevaluation. So yeah, Lois gets all questiony on Mister King, asking him about you know how old he is. Are you an alien? Are you not human? Uh, mm-hmm. And he insists that he is human, so, I mean, we'll keep that in mind. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, we cut back to... Because they're questioning where Talia... Because Talia's meant to be there. Talia's meant to be on the team. Uh, and it's worth mentioning, this thing that happened with Damien was a couple of weeks ago. And then we cut to a week ago when mm-hmm. uh, Shaw's got them kind of, like, suspended in, like, bubbles of some kind. Mm-hmm. Uh, and is bantering off with them, trying to question them. And basically wants her to join them. Says, hey, like, you could yeah. join. Like, we, we could do great things with this new Leviathan. Uh, you know, so on and so on. And Lois, uh, is and of course Talia tells him to piss off, basically. <laughs> just, right. just a bit. And Damien just keeps repeating, "You're under arrest," over and over again, because he's Damien, <laughs> which is pretty great. Yeah. yeah. And then it comes to Lois at Daily Planet, and she is working late, and someone who works there in the TV production 
department comes in and says, hey, I've got a package for you. And it turns out that she's not worked there for a while, and it, it she basically just starts talking like she's part of Leviathan. Mm-hmm. And makes it very clear that Lois is wanted, that Mark's got a message for her, and yeah. you you could be a vital part of like you know this new world and like forming it and whatnot. And we end with her opening the package, and I have zero idea what this thing is. Do you have any clue what's in this box? I have no idea what that is, but <laughs> whatever it is, it has to do with her dad's sacrifice. And if I remember, you know, he sacrificed himself, so Leviathan couldn't it, take over. It could be something you wear around your wrist, because that looks like a strap. Yeah. That's yeah. uh, under the, underneath the, the this this core metal part with the red and yellow on it. Is yeah. that not weird? Uh, but uh, the final page, of course, is that there's a, a sniper <laughs> looking. It's the, <laughs> it's the Winter Soldier. It actually that's, does look the Winter yeah. Soldier. <laughs> that's what I was like. Oh no, Buck! What happened, man? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because even when she holds it up, because I thought she was holding up like a camera in that last page. No. But she, I, don't think she, I don't think she is. I think she's just sort of holding it. Uh, but, she's just holding it like I, I, I got it. Yeah. You know. So, uh, so yeah. So it's, it's all intrigue. It's all setting up that that your checkmate exists to battle, uh, Leviathan and try Leviathan. and take them down. I, do you know? Yep. Conceptually, I like the issue quite a bit. I think the art looks mm-hmm. great. I like the mm-hmm. chemistry between a lot of the characters. I like the stuff that it's focusing on. I will critique it a little bit and say that you know, for a six issue mini, uh, I don't know if this feel like it, like did much story-wise yet. No. The very little to jump off of. Which here. I, this definitely felt like a uh this felt like a an issue one of an ongoing, not yeah, a mini. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Like, I have no problem with how little story advancement there is per se. Yeah. I actually would be fine with it. If this was a twelve issue book or ongoing, fine. But because there's only six issues, I kinda like I got to that and went, hmm, this is gonna be a sl- this is a slower pace than I would expect for a six issue book. Uh, is this mm-hmm. only you know the second series in a trilogy of series, or something? Because it doesn't yeah. feel like it doesn't feel like going to win by right. the end of the six issues to me. But yeah, Leviathan still seems like a pretty big threat. But then, you know, Bones is part of this, and by the time Infinite Frontier kicks off, he's re-establishing the DEO. Yeah, I, I think that so like I, I, that definitely you know. means to me that this takes place before Infinite Frontier at least. Yeah. 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 Exactly. And that that's what I had to say. Like that's my. Really, my only slight on this is it felt like it should have came out last year. <laughs> like, yeah. hot on the heels of Leviathan and, and all of that stuff. But who knows why? Like, there's a reason they pushed it, and, you know, um, maybe to go with Bendis' Justice League? I, I don't know. Doesn't but, feel like it will. I mean, no? they feel very separate, but who knows? Yeah, it's, but it's, uh... who, who knows at that point? So the, so, the whole thing of this King character, right, is... In in Checkmate, there's the character of King Faraday. He's like spy master. He's kind of Trevor, Steve Trevor before Steve Trevor, in that he's the governmental figure. You know, he's almost DC's Nick Fury, right? And I feel that that's who Bendis wants us to think this is, right? His name's King. However, we've got a lot of Markovia from Bendis with Leviathan taking over, them being a rogue nation. Um, how did he take over? Isn't there a royal family there? And if you remember Geoforce, right? He was Prince Brian of Markovia. Mm -hmm. So now I'm wondering if this is who he is, because that whole conversation with Lois, you know, he says that he's, she says he, you know, you're a king, that's all I know. I don't know if you're human, not that that's an issue, because look who I'm married to. But he goes, I assure you, I'm very much a human, right? I just, I feel this is going to be Geoforce. And this whole thing is they deposed him and now he's trying to get his country back. Because when you think about who's been missing from DC continuity and all this stuff, like Geoforce is a pretty major figure in the Outsiders and amongst other, and he's just been gone. Now you look at that Outsiders that's operating right now with Katana and Black Lightning. He's the one that's kind of missing. Along with Batman, but Batman's got enough going on, right? Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm gonna call it now. This ends up being King Brian of Markovia. We'll see. I have no strong feelings yeah. on who, who yeah. Mr. King is, gotcha. but I, I don't uh, have any reason to doubt uh, that theory. But yeah. Uh, yeah, 
I think if you like the first, uh, you know, Le- Leviathan book that mm-hmm. Bendis did, I think you'll you'll be into this issue. Uh, it doesn't feel like it's moving quick enough to actually end in six issues' time, but I mean, we'll see. Yeah. You know, Bendis has definitely yep. swerved us on that kind of thing before, so it's not entirely impossible. So, uh, all right, Matt, what are you giving? Check me. Um, I'm gonna give this an eight. I want to give seven point five, but I can't with Malieve art that's so shadowy and moody and feels perfect for this kind of espionage type stuff. And then you get to the Leviathan set stuff, and it's real bright and it's kind of counter to what we see the heroes doing. Yeah, you know, it's, yeah, it's the, really it's almost that an ironic touch that the heroes are always yeah. in the dark areas, they're always in, in secret in uh-huh. the shadows, whereas the the villains are the ones with the big bright rooms and all yep. that. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, so like it's hard to give for me anything with Malieve art, you know, below an eight. So I'm I'm gonna give it an eight. Yeah, or even just something as simple as that. The, in that last page, when Lois is looking out the window, the panels are circular because it kind of mimics a scope. Yeah. Uh, but it's not mm-hmm. it's not like there's like scope lines on it to really like tell you it's a scope that you're looking at. Yeah. Right. Uh, it's, I th- yeah, I'll probably agree with the eight. I I think it's uh, there's nothing I don't like about it really. <laughs> like, right. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's perfectly fine, and this is why I'm glad. Had I read Infinite Frontier before this, I might have been like, I don't know, check me was that good, but you know, it's fine. Like it's it's a good read. Um, mm. and if and if you like Bendis and Believe, I can't believe you wouldn't be reading this. Like that's a solid team. So uh, they're just doing it at DC now. <laughs>